Alright, so we will begin tonight with uh, reading a recap of the verses that we covered from last week's Devo. Uh, it was 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. Last week we began to discuss the growth of our avatar in Fire Emblem Conquest, and, and we paired this growth with the things that we should be adding to our personal growth in faith. We talked about how we begin with coming to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. From the beginning of faith, we next start to go through a transformation as we add goodness to our walk and begin to discern the things that have no place in our walk with Christ. Lastly, we discussed how in this process, we would also be adding knowledge to our faith as we delve into the Word of God and, and spend time learning of Him and His promises, as well as increasing in our prayer life. This week, we will continue to move forward with 2 Peter 1, but first, let's bring up our avatar from Fire Emblem Conquest. We had discussed how, at the start, your avatar is fairly gullible and new to the ways of Norian War. Once our avatar has made the choice to return back to their Norian family, we begin to see change in their demeanor. Our avatar is now filled with purpose. We see the cruelty of the king and recognize that many of the missions we are sent out on are designed for us to fail and be killed. Yet our avatar continues on fighting, but sparing the lives of the people that we face in combat. Though our avatar knows the king will not approve of this, we make sure to complete the task at hand using loopholes to get out of punishment with the king. One remarkable thing about our avatar in this situation is, despite what they face, whether it be the cutting words of their blood family, the Hoshidans, when we face them in combat, or the jeers of Iago, uh, the King Garen's advisor, our avatar stays in control of their actions and emotions and perseveres to the end to complete their mission. We lose many friends and people who help us along our journey. And while our avatar takes the time to mourn these losses, we keep in control and persevere to fight the good fight with the help of our friends, of course. Now, let's take a look at the next verse in 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 6. It says, And to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. We have our faith. We're working daily to add goodness and knowledge to our walk. The next step is self-control. But self-control of what exactly? Self-control can be a difficult thing to master. It requires practice, knowledge, and willpower. It's what keeps us from haphazardly shouting whatever repugnant thoughts come into our minds when we disagree with something. Self-control is what helps us recognize that we don't have to post our opinions all over Facebook. And it keeps us from acting foolish or taking part in things we ought not to. At this point in the spiritual arithmetic, we are beginning to enter into the nitty gritty. This is the area where we begin to take up our crosses and follow after Jesus. We've been building up to this point, praying for wisdom and knowledge, and now we begin to be cut by the truth and start doing the hard cleaning. But thank God that it is not on us to do this alone, but rather we give our yoke of burdens over to Him. Matthew 11 verses 28 through 30, Come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Self-control is easy to learn but difficult to master, but it's not completely on us. In it is a requirement to trust in God, and when we feel the sting of temptation, we cry out to the Father to be rescued or to be changed so that we do not have to be or do whatever it is we used to. We are no longer controlled by our sinful nature. Rather, we are led by the Spirit that leads us out of the mire and away from the things of our past if we truly follow after Him. 
Galatians 5, 19 through 25, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And through this, we will persevere. Persevering means that we push through even when the difficulty of the situation says you will fail. One of my favorite scriptures of all time, and I'm sure everyone can attest to this because I think I throw this in almost every single devotion. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. What this perseverance is building within us is a complete trust in Jesus. This is an area that many of us have difficulty planting our feet in. We see all of our anxiety, depression, sickness, debt, pain, brokenness, failures. And because our faith is so small, we naturally fool ourselves into believing Jesus is incapable of helping us. But take this question to heart the next time you think any of the above listed things are just a part of who you are. Is God really that weak? I know that sounds harsh, but I say that because I want you to understand just because our faith is weak does not mean that our God is. He is Lord of all creation, the one who created you and sees who you are and can be. He's the one who performs miracles and can change the tide of any battle. He's the one who came to earth, suffered at our hands, and even though he could have been taken off that cross by an army of angels, chose to stay up there and endure to the end so that these very things that we want to quit on because that's just who we are could be shattered and cast away. There may be times that we too must endure hardship, but praise God and count those times joy for you are not alone in those hardships because he is literally refining you and working within you so that when you come out of the other side of that tunnel, you are stronger and blessed for it. We're going to wait till next week to talk about godliness. But for this week, let's just meditate on these scriptures. Are there things we need self-control with? Are there things that we have just given up on and accepted as part of who we are? Sometimes the things we pray for don't come the way we think they should. And thank God for that. You might not get what you want, but he will always give you what you need. Put your trust in him. Pray and place yourself in his presence. I love you guys. Yeah.